Greetings, student fans, and a welcome to another edition of the Collapse Cafe here on the Doomstead Diner, and now hosted by Chasing the Squirrel, uh, uh, my friend K Dog's website. Uh, some of you may know that, uh, well, a few years ago, uh, my uh, condition worsened, and uh, I ended up having to go into the hospital, and then I've been bouncing around through a few different types of living arrangements since then. Uh, and so I uh, had to close my old website, uh, unfortunately. Someday I may uh, be able to resurrect it, but uh, at the moment, we are now located at ChasingTheSquirrel.com. Uh, Doomstead Diner, our forum, is uh, located there as the subweb as well. Uh, so when you go to Chasing the Squirrel, you can click on the Doomstead link and chat with us uh, there. And we also have, uh, well, if you're viewing this video, you know, uh, my Doomstead Diner YouTube channel is still up. That comes free, okay? And uh, as long as you keep it active these days, uh, it stays up. Uh, YouTube did start taking down inactive YouTube sites. So uh, I did uh, choose this time to uh, begin making videos again. And that's also because, uh, well, things are perking up in the world of collapse and uh, it's a, a good time to uh, get back to talking about it. Uh, and uh, I think interest is out there again, uh, kind of waned for a while, but people are starting to talk again more about the subjects that we talked about for the last decade or so uh, online. And I am with uh, an old friend of mine uh, who uh, participated with me on many of the Collapse Cafes that we did in the old days. Uh, um, those videos are still up. Uh, he goes by the handle of Monster666. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, well, a, a variety of topics. He is located over in uh, the UK, Britain, uh, in uh, London. You're still in the London area, right? Yep, that's right. Yep. All right. And uh, he uh, is in the banking industry, or he was still a banker? Yep, still, just. Okay, still a banker. Um, I'll be interested to find out. I think I might start with that, find out about how his banking career is going. Uh, because he was just starting out in that when uh, uh, I first got to know him. And uh, so find out a little bit about that. So uh, why don't you tell me about that? Tell me about uh, your particular career and then uh, what's going on with employment in general in, uh, in the UK. Yeah, well, yeah, these days uh, I've, I've moved from retail to corporate banking. So, yeah, I just deal um, in the belly of the beast, so to speak. Um, in the banking headquarters and um, yeah I just deal with uh, household names in terms of clients so you probably heard of some like Visa, Goldman Sachs, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. Yeah the big wigs, the biggies. Uh, yeah and I, then you know, it, 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 I don't know if, if you're not free to say or you don't want to say it's okay but uh, what uh, what bank you're, you're working with? Um, uh, it's just Don't one of the major it. banks. Okay, it's a major. Yeah. It's a major bank. Uh, is it? Is it a major English bank? Yeah, uh, one of the big ones. Okay, one of the big ones. All right, so uh, we can speculate on that, but uh, uh, we'll uh, we'll let it be uh, a mystery. All right, so you work with Goldman and uh, uh, the other uh, the other big ones. Visa, like you said. Uh, what sort of uh, deals do you handle? Uh, doing that? Are you in mergers or uh, uh, kind of uh, finance? Uh, what do you do? It's more like servicing. So like when they're making payments and things, we just um, track various payments, say where the funds have gone. If they've made an accident sending money to somewhere, then we have to sort of find out where it's gone and try and recover the money, that sort of thing. You won't believe how many times these companies mess up their transfers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
uh, I would. Uh, uh, I, I don't think I would be that surprised uh, it, historically. I remember that being a problem when I was in the industry too, and uh, you know, in those years we didn't have uh, 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 nearly the uh, computer power that uh, that is uh, uh, being applied to applied to the whole business now. So I think probably uh, the errors were even more regular. Um, because uh, human error, of course, uh, tends to happen more often. But on the other hand, you know what they say, you know, uh, to err is human, but to really fuck up takes a computer. So, uh, so I guess when, when the computers make a mistake, the, the mistakes can be really big. So uh, that happens. All right. Uh, and what about the, the banking industry in general? How would you characterize its health in Britain uh, these days? I think it's kind of all related to um, the cost of living and things um, in the sense that um, markets are saturated and they're restrained. So companies are struggling to gain market share. And you know how shareholders are like, they always want more profits at the end of the day. So to make those uh, profits increase, there's a big movement towards cost cutting. So so like a lot of companies, uh, big companies, banks included, they're um, shedding uh, 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 staff, basically. Mm -hmm. And what about, uh, we talked a little bit before we got on uh, about uh, AI. Uh, is that uh, affecting uh, the amount of personnel and so forth yet? Uh, are they substituting uh, for people with uh, uh, AI? Uh, helpers and uh, chatbots and whatever, instead of actual live customer reps? Um, I think it's a bit, I mean, it is happening, but I don't think it's happening in, um, in a huge amount right now. But the technology is there. And like you said, it will probably uh, replace some of the simpler queries, these chat, a because at the end of the day, the AI technologies are just complex language um, models. Um, I'm not an, I'm not like an IT wizard. So I'm just sort of reading here and there what it's about. But basically, you know, you, you give it a query and it'll come out with an answer, which is 80% of the time it's correct. But then sometimes it can as they say, hallucinate. So, uh -huh. so basically what that means is it will confidently give you the wrong answer. And um, yeah, it's quite interesting because I've had, um, I haven't tried all the language models, but the most famous one is the chat GBT. So you can just use that. It's quite fun, actually. You just um, ask it a question and it will churn out an answer. And, you know, for the most part, it's OK. And the more sophisticated kinds, they tend to source where they're getting their information from. Um, so, yeah, that's the basis on which um, companies are trying to do. So I think at the moment, it's more in the investment phase. They're trying to invest and they're trying to um, tweak the model, so to speak. So then the errors um, are uh, less prominent. So. I think when it comes to simple customer servicing, I think that's where, I mean, it's already started, but I think that's where it's going to be felt the most. Um, and I think this would probably, at least in uh, in terms of British companies, they, they've outsourced a lot of jobs to India. So, you know, I think there'll be an impact on those countries because it might be just simply cheaper to get a bot to do things. I mean, the thing is as well with the AI is it also does imaging as well, I know. So then that can affect other industries. So basically, you can just tell the bot, I want you to draw, um, I don't know, um, a collapsed cafe. And then it will just, based on what prompts you use, it will draw a cafe, maybe with a broken sign or something. I don't know. But, um, you know, th this is. Um, you know, this can affect other industries as well. 
Um, some people say you can even do, yeah, go on. Yeah, they say with the, the imagery and uh, so forth that, that that's really going to have a big effect in politics uh, with uh, basically fake photographs being, uh, being uh, put out that are created by uh, AI programs that show people, politicians, whatever, who are being running for office, uh, doing stuff that they didn't actually do. And, you know, one politician using that stuff as a means to, uh, uh, you know, undermine uh, other people, you know, or show, you know, for instance, you know, show uh, uh, Donald Trump, uh, you know, uh, you know, seducing a 12 year old or something like that, you know. Uh, 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 with uh, um, Andy, uh, uh, the uh, uh, prince over there, uh, who uh, yeah. used to uh, hang out together, right? Um, whatever. Uh, so, uh, do you hear any anything about that? I mean, Britain's always been a uh, a hotbed hotbed of uh, political intrigue and uh, scandals. Uh, are there any good uh, political scandals ongoing over there these days? Um, I wouldn't say scandals, but um, I would. Um, I think this year is going to be quite a big one uh, for Sudak. Um, he's uh, he's leading the Conservative Party, but um, the question is for uh, for how long, really, because. Um, we are due an election this year, but the question is, when is it going to happen? So it has to happen within five years of the last one, but the party in power gets to call it whenever they want, but it has to happen in 2024. So the question is, is he going to do it earlier in the year, later in the year? Um, the expectation is that he will probably, the Conservative will probably lose uh, their power in the general election. And if that's the case, then he'll be a goner because the Conservatives, they don't like losers, basically. So if you lose an election, it's not like even the Republicans who will stand by Trump. They'll be like, you've lost your crap. That's it. Your career's done. Uh -huh. so, yeah. so that would be, it would seem to me to be, uh, you know, if they're moving moving these days a little bit more towards the left over there that would seem to me to be a little bit of an opposite movement that you see here where uh uh looks like uh, there's a swing back to the right again here uh in the uh fascist states of america uh would you say uh, uh that the left is uh is uh, gaining more traction uh, again in england i would say I wouldn't say it's a movement to the left per se. I think the issue with the conservative, and this is something that Sunak hasn't been able to handle very well, is after they won the Brexit vote, the conservative, there was a lot of people with more extreme views, let's just say, about immigration and things like that. And they've been, because the... Um, their margin is smaller these days than it was in the past. They've had an outside, um, oversized influence on policy. And, and I think people are beginning to sort of push back on that. And, and that pushback is sort of um, mean that instead of going to the far right, at least UK wise, um, they're trying to go more to the center. And in fact, this is one of the things that the opposition uh, Strammer is um, trying to um, do because before um, uh, Strammer, um, we had uh, Jeremy Corbyn and um, he was pretty left wing. Now, he, was a he was a very um, pro-union guy. You know, he would follow the left wing policies, which was really not compatible with the current um, British uh, voter. So I think that's what um, hindered them. But, you know, the last, let's just say it's been four years now, um, the last four years, Keir Strammer has been trying to push Labour more into the centre, more into the 
relevant zone, as it were, because you want to always maximize your appeal to as many voters as possible. So that's his mission. And um, he's been trying, you know, in these four years just to get um, rid of the Corbynites, the the left wing nutters, basically, so that, um, you know, they're more centered, whereas Sunak has largely failed to do that. So they're kind of too right wing to be accepted. Plus, on top of that, there's a lot of issues with the cost of living and all the usual problems that all the countries are suffering from. Um, so usually the current administration gets all the flat for that kind of thing. What about immigration? That is a, a huge, huge topic here at the moment. Um, uh, ha- has your immigration problem uh, uh, eased or become greater or it's about the same or, you know, and where are the people coming from? Uh, you know, is it, is it mostly legal, illegal immigration, um, and, you know, com- competition for jobs? What's the, what's the situation going on like that? I mean, yeah, I think one of the central um, issues with today, unsurprisingly, is the immigration. And um, I think the basically one of the big, topics and this is one of the things that uh, Hernak has been trying to uh, do is he's on uh, trying to um, get asylum seekers processed in Rwanda. But it's very commercial and lots of people are against it for X, Y and Z. And this um, the and on top of that the UK Supreme Court Well, we're having uh, quite a bit of a breakup in our chat. He was uh, I think his, sorry. Uh, our, our chat is breaking up quite a bit. Uh, we're, you know, I've lost, uh, lost your signal here uh, off and on uh, through that last bit. So it kind of uh, was not that clear, uh, but let's just continue on uh, and see, see how it goes. I think, I think we're all right again. Okay, so I don't know where it, I don't know where it cut off, so I will just, that he was, you know, one of the big things that he's trying Drew is um, trying, there was a lot of conservative um, members who are just not very happy with the idea. And on top of that, the Supreme Court in the UK deemed his original plan unlawful. So that's one of the things that he's been pushing. In terms of like immigration numbers, um, it is, it has actually increased since, um, uh, the Brexit, like the net migration stop. So um, one of the recorded figures, for example, they said in May 2022 was there was about 606,000 and that increased to 672,000 in 2023. And um, the target, I think, I, I can't remember what the target was, but um, I think it was supposed to be like 250,000. So it's way, way above what they were saying. And I guess, you know, the pro Brexit person is probably seeing this as a failure in um, the policy. But um, yeah, so that's one of the, the topics that he's basically sort of standing on a hill, I get on his sword. Um, I don't know if it's like such a deal breaker in terms of the vote. I think it's probably more of an emotive issue in America than it is here. Although I I wouldn't say, you know, it's an irrelevant topic, but I I really feel like 
it could be a vote changer in America, whereas I'm not sure that's so much the case now. I think it's just the cost of living. What about the, uh, yeah, the housing issue? I mean, if they're bringing in uh, that many people, I know down on the Texas border uh, uh, in one month, they had uh, 300,000 uh, come across the southern border. Uh, you know, if you multiply that, that out to a yearly basis, I mean, you're talking 3 million uh, Im immigrants in a year, which is, uh, or even more than that, uh, which, I mean, our uh, system, such as it is, uh, does not appear to be able to absorb that number of immigrants that rapidly. Um, what is happening in terms of being able to house these people, integrate them into the society, find jobs for them? Uh, crime, is there a, a, a problem with the, the crime on the increase? Any of that stuff uh, going on as far as uh, with, in, in conjunction with immigration? Um, crime rates um, in the UK, I don't know about the latest uh, figures, if I'm honest with you, like if it's uh, gone up or it's gone down. Um, I think um, violent crime, it's about the same. But I, to be honest, I, I have to put my hands up and just say I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but in terms of housing prices, I mean, the prices are always going up in the UK. It's almost uh, a, a non-use, uh, non-newsworthy uh, now because it's just standard for it to go above inflation. I think the other problem for a lot of people is the rental prices are going up and that's putting a squeeze on um, disposable income. So uh, renters are suffering, uh, interest rates have gone up uh, because of the inflation. And again, that's making mortgages uh, more expensive and then less people are able to get into the property market. Um, so those are the type of issues specifically that are sort of hot topics. And, you know, it extends to other things like energy costs, like bills, um, heating, electricity, that, that, that went up massively um, during the Ukraine war when it started. And although the increases haven't been as dramatic, in fact, it's stable, it's it hasn't really dropped in in a way that's helped much to the average person. So, you know, you've got these double whammies and you know um, how it is with energy. It's not just the cost of heating and uh, putting the lights on, but everything has gone up, like food has gone up. People just sure. have less disposable income. And... Yeah. Everything is dependent upon, you know, energy in some respect, uh, either in its manufacture or in its transportation or whatever. So uh, the cost, the cost of energy is going to uh, affect, uh, you know, the cost of living directly. Uh, and and of course, uh, you mentioned the war in Ukraine. Uh, with when that uh, took off, uh, the uh, the Russians, well, the United States wanted Russia embargoed, uh, their energy to be embargoed. So uh, to try to, you know, force them economically to uh, desist from uh, their actions in Ukraine. But uh, basically what's happened is uh, Europe lost a lot of its uh, cheap energy supply uh, that Russia was giving them. I think that has hurt probably Germany the most. Uh, because their manufacturing sector, that economy is very much dependent on manufacturing. And uh, uh, so they've gone into uh, an outright recession. Uh, is is uh, Britain in recession as well? Or are you just kind of uh, staying just above the line? Like, uh, think, yeah, we're doing the limbo in terms of growth, you know, like, it's it's low growth, you know, in the zero point something. It's uh, 
it's avoiding recession though. And I think Germany might have avoided the recession on a technicality, like they had a contraction in the previous quarter and then the latest one, it was like flat lined. Mm-hmm. So you know what they say, if it's not two consecutive, um, contra- uh, two consecutive quarters of contraction, then it's not a recession. But like you said, they are struggling. And I think the problem was Germany, I think what from what I've read, is it's more than just the energy situation, although that definitely doesn't help. Um, well, what the energy... Is your impact in there? Well, I think the other thing that's, um, that's a problem for Germany is one of their biggest export markets and their uh, biggest areas of growth in the last 10 years or so has been China. And the Chinese economy isn't growing at nearly the same rate. And uh, moreover, I think the Chinese government themselves is less friendly to foreign um, companies. So this is the problem that Germany has. It has, you know, all these big manufacturers, cars, car manufacturers, pharmaceuticals, big names, and they focused on them so much. But the outlook in terms of growth is slightly questionable. And there's a feeling, I don't know if they would follow through, there's a feeling that the Germans need to be more, um, they have to look at uh, diversifying. And one of the big things that you know they say about Germany and Europe in general is they don't have any big Silicon Valley companies like Facebook or um, Microsoft or any of these companies. They kind of missed that boat. And that's the issue with the Germans as well, because they've um, always opted to support their big, big corporations, uh, but they don't. Um, really think about startups and the venture. You know, the, the, like America has always invest in lots of venture capitals and startups and things like that. But the Germans are quite av- adverse to that kind of thing. You know, they like to play the safe option. And, you know, at this stage of time, it could be a bad thing because if you've only got one card and the card starts to fail, what are you going to do next? Yeah. Then you've got the yeah. Yeah, I think you're right on the mark there with the Germans. Uh, uh, They have depended a a whole lot on uh, heavy industry, particularly uh, their automotive manufacturers, uh, uh, engines, things like that, Um, um, jet engines, and and uh, and then on the pharmaceutical and and chemistry, uh, you know Bayer uh, and. uh, Monsanto, I think, uh, is owned uh, by them now. Uh, so they, you know, they have these uh, these huge uh, segments of the market, but uh, but they have not really uh, gone anywhere in uh, in electronics uh, or in communications, I should say. In electronics, I think they uh, they have uh, uh, more or less kept up, but uh, uh, I think. Uh, you know, they also have that problem, I think, uh, in that, uh, you know, their location uh, has, uh, on the one hand, been good as far as sort of being a crossroads and, and for trade uh, in Europe, but their lack of uh, ocean ports uh, and, you know, uh, ability to ship overseas, I think, um, without going through other places and uh, paying transit costs. I think that has uh, affected their ability as well uh, over the years. So uh, it's it, it's hard to see where they will go. But, uh, you know, the thing the thing is about Germany is that as. As Germany's economy, so goes Europe, you know, uh, they, they are uh, a, an economic engine, have been uh, for the last 50 years uh, since World War II. Uh, you know, there was a, 
a brief period, I think, when they absorbed East Germany, where they kind of, you know, that, that took a lot of their uh, economic wherewithal and sucked it up for, you know, uh, a decade or so, but then they uh, uh, became an engine for growth again in Europe. Uh, but without that engine, it's hard to see where uh, where the economic growth in Europe can come from. You know, North Sea oil is pretty much played out for uh, the uh, the UK and for the uh, Scandinavian countries as well. So I don't see a whole lot of energy coming there. Uh, uh, what about the, you know, I know the Scandinavians have put a lot into uh, renewable energy uh, in, in terms of their uh, uh, solar farms and uh, hydro and so forth. Um, do you see them as being uh, uh, able to uh, maintain their economic status and uh, whatnot uh, in, in that area of the world? I think maybe like in the short term, uh, it's possible, especially for Norway, who gets a lion's share of uh, North Sea oil. Um, th they're using it to um, fund um, their ex Lost you again. Now, one thing I don't know is how this is going to come out, how it's going to render as a uh, video because the packets go through a slightly different path than they go from one to the other. And sometimes the recording comes out, but the live version does wow. not. Uh, oh, I think he might be coming back. Uh, no, not good. All right, well, folks, uh, I'm hoping that the recording, uh, I'm going to get this much in. I am going to sign off my recording right now. I'm going to keep trying to talk with uh, Mansa, but uh, when I can get a better connection, uh, we will continue this discussion about what is going on in the world uh, over in Europe and uh, just in general. I did want to talk about uh, EV transportation today as well, but I don't think we're going to get to it. All right. We'll talk to you again soon. Next time I can get a good connection between here and the UK. Uh, it's a long way from Alaska to Jolly Old England. That is half of the world. Uh, connections can be changed. And that's all to do this time up to the next time. Here. Class Cafe of the Dream Said Diner. Hasta la internet works. <laughs>